Hi, man, Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Today, we're going to be opening up the Sinclair ZX81, a very iconic computer from the, I want to say, 1980s. Uh, I could Google it, but you guys down below always shout at me anyway. I'll get something wrong. On the back, Sinclair ZX81 personal computer, use only approved AC adapter, patent pending, made in the UK. I actually did have one of these back in the day, but I can't really remember too much about it because it was a kind of black and white flickery flickery type affair and I soon lost interest in it, but it is really cool to be handling one again. Now something I always remember is that you have to be super careful with the connections because here's the tape connections and the power connections, they're all the same jack and you have to be careful, it says 9 volts DC. I can't remember if it's center pin positive or center pin negative. So all of these things would have to be Googled to really ensure you don't blow up anything. And of course, it's an analog output. So I think let's have a look inside. There's certainly a lot of things one might want to do to one of these to get it working on a modern TV, for example, uh, by converting the RF output to composite. But let's have a look inside to see the condition because if it's in original condition, you might want to do nothing to it. Just make sure it's working and you'll be happy at that. But I am noticing these screws I'm taking out at the bottom here, they do appear to be in the recesses for some rubber feet. So the fact that they're missing suggests to me that somebody's probably been here at some point in its life. I can't really remember what software I had on it. I think I had some games, but they're pretty much text text affairs, you know, just characters moving around rather than graphics. But once we get this running, we can uh, fire up some software. There does appear to be some interesting dust in here. It's like some sort of pollen or spores, <sighs> possibly cat hair, dandelion, something like that. Uh, this was sent in by Pink Mouse. Thank you very much. So perhaps it's Mouse Dander. another couple of screws out. The first thing I noticed, by the way, is the PCB has that interesting crinkle finish. I can't remember the reasons for that. I think it was something to do with the varnish being put over the solder. Something, something in particular about that anyway. Not a problem. Let's unplug the keyboard. Yeah, that's not good. We're going to have to get a new membrane for this and it's going to be a self-adhesive affair. It's probably not a bad thing because I do hear that most of these are pretty much dead anyway now. So I'll have to Google a new one of these. I think I'll look up ZX Renew. You might have one. Now, let's check out the main board. You can see it's super simple. The first thing you have here is your 5 volt regulator, your 7805 connected to a nice heatsink and those are easy to replace. If you find there's an issue with the regulator, replace that. So you can see it's a 9 volt coming in and it's going into the regulation. You'd have to check the circuitry though to see if 9 volts is used elsewhere. Um, it's quite hard to see just looking at it. I can't uh, really tell what's going on. That would take some time to trace that out. But that's fine, right? Five volts there. You've got the microphone connection and the earphone connection. So that's um, basically for, that's the input to your ZX81 from your tape player. So you can load your games and that's your microphone out so that you can record your software and games onto tape. You have the all too common uh, Aztec uh, RF modulator here and these are really common. You'll, you'll find them in almost anything from that period. I almost think, did they have the monopoly on making these? They just basically they were everywhere. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I may have done this actually on my ZX81, uh, you can do some fiddles with here where you can get it to output a composite. That's something to research for the future so that way you don't have to worry about finding a TV that you can still tune in. And the board is super simple beyond that. You've got the Ferranti uh, Uncommitted Logic Array, which is a 
discrete logic custom chips that would have been custom ordered by Sinclair probably designed as well the logic they want and that's the logic of the whole board pretty much you have so that's controlling everything how the the uh, how the bits are flipping and are flopping let's leave it at that your Z80A processor your Zilog that's your main CPU You've got this chip here, the ZCM38818P, and that will be your ROM. That will contain the program memory, effectively, of the ZX81. So that will include also the basic interpreter on there. And these two chips here are a uh, PD2114LC by NEC, and they're going to be a couple of 4K static RAM chips. You have 16K of RAM. You've got your edge connector for future upgrades like that very wobbly i remember a very wobbly i think it was a 16k ram pack and if you pressed on your keyboard too much that would wobble out and it would crash and that's all there is there it's a really simple board so let's uh, zoom in a little bit so just for those people at home who like to play along and know about these things so it's a sinclair 1981 issue 3 PCB. So I don't know how many issues they made, but this is the third one along. The heatsink does have a mark on it, interestingly enough, so I don't know if somebody's been in here or if that's just a generic, you know, QA checkpoint as part of the process. Looking at it though, I'm not seeing any um, anything too scary. I, I don't see any signs of rework. Just looking at these capacitors here, because they do look in quite good condition. They're not bulgy and they're yeah, they're clean, they look like modern capacitor, um, just as you'd expect to find one from RS. But they certainly don't look like they've been soldered, so I'm sure they're all original. There is one small ceramic capacitor here that definitely looks a bit munched. Again, it's ceramic capacitor, again, probably all right. I reckon the uh, first port call for this um, in a future future video probably is to actually clean up this board and find the specs or a suitable power supply, or just tap into the regulator and uh, take it from there. The regulator actually does look a bit uh, odd. Look at the legs of that regulator. That may well have been reworked at some point, but you never know. It's, it's Unless you see a lot of these, and I would have to admit I don't, that could be part of the course at the time. So yeah, nice little machine. Very um, minimalist, but it obviously did the job. It was a precursor to one of the most successful machines in the UK. And uh, I'm sure the the machine that many a program, many or was written on, but many a programmer was created. Did you have one of these beasties in your uh, your house at home? Please let me know down below and uh, let me know also if you've had any joy with replacement membrane keyboards is there a better one perhaps we could make a, an upgraded version and get the best and again thanks to pink mouse for sending this in by the way he uh, caught me in a stream and mentioned it and that was quite a while ago so thanks for bearing with me as well that would be it's it was pre-covid i think you sent me this pre-covid that's how long it was as ever thanks for watching